Hey guys and welcome to the 8th video in our Pygame RPG series here on the Coders Legacy channel. In this video we'll take a look at player collisions. Okay, I, I know we did this in video number 6 where we implemented collisions between the enemy and the player, but there's still a few things left that we need to actually implement, such as the health bar. Okay, and the health bar is very important for collision detection because without the health bar then the effect for collision detection, which is basically the player getting hurt or the enemy getting hurt, that can be fully implemented. Okay, so that's the main focus in today's video. In the last video, which is video number seven, we actually, you know, sort of went on a sidetrack and we actually did stuff like performance improvements. We added in some extra, you know, features like platforming and added in player warping and stuff. So check that out if you haven't, okay? So we'll continue on today. The very first thing I want to do is just open up the game file, okay? And open up the player file as well and open up the enemy file. Okay, I just want to quickly review what we've done so far. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, and let's open up our game file and run our code. Okay, so here's our current code. Okay, it looks pretty nice. We can jump up on these platforms and all. Okay, and we have the player hitbox showing in red and the enemy hitbox showing in blue. And the attack of the player is showing in green. Okay, but I think we've, uh, you know, I think we've gone through these concepts well enough, so let's just go ahead and disable these wrecks, okay? So I'll just go over here and disable the player wrecks, okay? And let's just make that a bit neater, okay? And I'll go to the enemy as well and disable the colored wrecked in his area, okay? That's good. Now, just one or two minor tweaks that I noticed that, you know, made things look a bit better. I'm gonna go to the attack function in the player and change this to three, okay? If you watch the last video carefully, you'll know that this is basically gonna increase the attack duration a bit. And what else do I want to do? Um, I think that's it for now, actually. So yeah, let's run this code and take a look at the output. Okay, good. Okay, player warping is just a bit weird. It needs a bit a little tweak, because it seems a bit too sudden, okay? So I'll just go and tweak that as well, okay? I think we need to change this to about minus 50, okay? And this is actually because of how the player actually works, because of how the image actually works, okay? And we actually need to change one more thing as well. Uh, sorry, wrong one. But uh, let me just run this one more time to confirm it, okay? Okay, uh huh. Yeah, he appears in the wrong area, sort of, okay? So let me just go and change that. What am I gonna change? I'm actually gonna make him begin from minus 50. Or let's just actually tone these down to minus 40, okay? I think that this is gonna be the optimal setting. So let's just see what happens. Okay, I think that looks pretty natural now, okay? So these kind of things just require a little tweaking until you get them right, okay? It looks pretty natural as he goes in and comes out, okay? Great. So let's go ahead and focus back on the collision detection and the health bar, okay? So the first thing I want to do is add in the ability to kill this enemy, okay? Because currently, He's not dying. And there's actually one more thing that I just noticed. Because as the player runs and he attacks, it just looks weird, doesn't it? You can't really see the attack. And I'll tell you why this is happening, okay? There are a whole bunch of improvements we're making here, so that's good, I guess. So what we need to do, actually, is increase the priority of the attack function and move it down here, after the move function, okay? So this way that the attack function will always take priority. So if the a player is actually attacking and he's also moving at the same time, the attack function is going to happen last. So the attack animation will be the one that plays last, okay? And let me go ahead and replay that and you'll see that it looks a lot better, okay? You can see that he's actually attacking now while running. Now some of you may think this is weird and some of you may even want to disable attacking while running. Again, that's totally up to you and feel free to do it, you know, uh, do, feel free to do it however you want, okay? So what next? Well, I want to go to the enemy, and over here is basically the player collision function, okay? And remember, what is this? Player, uh, when it collides, self.rect is basically the rect for the enemy. And we're saying here that when it collides with the player's, enemy, with the player's hitbox, player.rect is the player's hitbox, player.attack range is the player's attack, attack area, okay? The attack radius. So player.rect. What this basically means is, hit the player, 
what this means hit by the player okay so over here i'm going to say self dot kill okay so basically the enemy is going to die because that's what self dot kill does it's a built-in function so let's go ahead and try this and you know what one more thing let's just print out something over here i am dead okay and let's go back to our enemy and run this code i'll hit him now and it comes printed out i am dead but he's not dying why is that well, i'll tell you why this is actually a pretty common bug of sorts not a bug it's more like a mistake that people do basically when you call self.kill basically the sprite is killed okay but the thing is you're still writing the image you're still try drawing the image aren't you you're using uh, move you're using collision you're using player collision you are also moving the render function. Actually, this is the important thing. You're still moving the image with e1.move. Uh, e1 is the, is the enemy object. And e1.render, you're still drawing that image. Okay? The sprite is dead. This is basically just the ghost of the enemy over there. Okay? You can't interact with him anymore. Okay? Not really. But he's basically uh, not dead completely. Okay? This is, he's basically still left over. And how are we going to fix this? Well, uh, we have the enemy group over here that we made, but I don't know why we didn't add the enemy into it. But let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, enemy group dot add e1. Okay, and I'm also gonna use a better system for this. I'm actually gonna cut this out. Okay, e1 dot render. I'm gonna say for enemy in. Let's change that to lowercase in enemy group enemy dot render okay so this way no matter how many enemies there are in the enemy group okay we can just keep adding them in there and this line will automatically render all of them okay so let's go ahead and try this again okay and let's see what happens yep he's dead he died let's just try that one more time okay and we really need to come up with a way to add in more enemies like you know automatically so yeah this you can see that this is working perfectly fine okay so just one more thing I want to do. I want to clean this up a bit. Okay, I want to basically move all these functions within an update function. So something like we'll change this to for enemy in enemy group enemy dot update. Okay, and of course we need to go and make this update function now. So I'll go to the enemy and down here I'll make an update function. Okay, and this might have to, have to take some parameters later on because, yeah, this is going to need the, um, hold on, it's going to need the in the ground group, okay, ground group, let's just call it group, and it'll need the player as parameters, okay. So we'll need to take care of this as well. Now I know that this is a lot of small, small changes around here, but you kind of need to keep track of this, this is all important, it's all important to keep, you know, to keep your code clean and all, so yeah. I hope you guys are following and I hope you guys are understanding everything. So I'm just going to pass these two in to the enemy update function and they'll automatically, all these three functions will be called. Okay, great. And let's just run this code one more time just to make sure everything is okay. Of course, of course. We need to change these to self. Okay. Self. Self over there. Save. Be sure to save. Come back here. And there's our enemy, okay. Let's attack him and dead. Okay, great. So what next? Well, next up is the health bar. Okay, we finally tweaked everything, we've adjusted everything, optimized everything, and now it's time to add in those health bars. I'm gonna go over to our main file here, make a new file called health bar, okay. This is basically a new object, so I'm making a new file for it. Now let's open it up, okay, and import pygame, as always. I'm going to create a vector2 object, because we'll need this later, for the position of the health bar, actually. And I'll come down here, actually, and create our health bar. Health bar, and we'll go ahead and inherit this from pygame.sprite.sprite, .sprite, okay, and create the init function. Okay, 
and we'll take in some parameters actually. I'm going to take in the X parameter, I'll take in the Y parameter as well for the position of the health bar. And is there anything else we need? I don't think so. So yeah, that should be good. Super, okay, for the initialization of the parent. Okay, and we come down here now and we need to give it an image. Okay, now for the images, let's go back here and open up our images folder. So basically we have these images over here. Let me just change that to heart one. Okay, so we have these six images over here. Okay, we have one of a heart that's completely empty and black. It's just one single black heart, which basically means zero health. And then we have the heart five, which has all five hearts at full health. Okay, so we're going to be using these six images. So I'm going to go ahead here and say health animations. Okay, and pygame dot image dot load heart zero dot png. And this is where we start copy pasting this but not before using convert alpha, okay? I hope you were watching the last video carefully because we use convert alpha over there. Convert alpha is basically used to optimize the performance, okay, for images. So I just copied this six times. So I'm just gonna go change them to one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we're done. And what else? Okay, good. So I'll go here and sign it because we want this to begin at full health, right? So I'm going to do number five, okay, which is basically this one, okay? So I'm going to go here and also create the pause variable for the position and initialize it to the x and y that we passed into the health bar. I'll make a render function, okay, that takes self, obviously, and takes a display, a display surface that we'll draw to. So display dot blit, and what else is there? Um, yeah, self.image, self.image and self.pause, draw it to self.pause, okay? Now let's go ahead and begin making some health bar related functions, okay? I'll make, um, what is it, take damage, okay, obviously, that's one function, and it'll take as parameter two, you know, one self, obviously, and one damage, damage will determine how much damage it's gonna, it's gonna take, okay? And let's make a new variable here called health, okay? because we have five health. We'll use this to basically track uh, which image is also currently being used, okay? So we'll just change this from five to self.health, okay? And so what do I do here? I'm gonna do self.health, okay, minus from it the damage. And if the self.health goes lower than zero, just set it back zero okay this ha this is just in case like we have one health left for instance and then we take attack which is like uh, damage three so we don't go into minus two okay we want to stop at zero okay so this is this is basically a condition for that what else is there that, that we need to add um of course we need to change the animation so we need to update the animation here like like this okay and let's make a new function we won't be using this uh, until you know in this video. Maybe in the next, uh, yeah, in the next because in the next video we'll take a look at items. So in this video we're going to be implementing the function to for heal, okay? And this takes a heal amount as well. And this is very similar in logic to the take damage function, okay? Let's copy paste that over, change this from minus to plus, and say that if self dot health is greater than five because we, we don't want to go more than five, just set it to five, okay? So I think we're done here. We've set up the render function, take damage and heal. Okay, I don't think there's anything left that we need to do. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm not gonna import this in game. I'm gonna go to the player class and I'm gonna import this in here, okay? I'll say from health bar, import health bar. Okay, I know this is a lot, a lot of coding without actually you know, running anything, but just hold on, we're almost there. So I'll go over here, and where should I go? Actually, I'll go ahead and put this into the player info. I'll call this self.healthbar is equal to healthbar. Okay, we're making the object. And what are the two parameters? The position, right? So I'll just say 10, 10, okay? This will, this will put it, um, render it somewhere near the top left. Okay, and I'll go and within the player's render function, 
uh, I'll go ahead and say self dot health bar dot render and pass in display. Okay, so we don't need to actually go into the game file and then make a new line for the health bar. We'll just do it from within the player. So when the player render function is called, the health bar will also be rendered. So let's just go ahead and run this to see if it's showing up. And of course, it's not showing up because I just remembered that we did not include that directory. So let's just do that. Done. Let's go back to game. Run. OK. And the same problem. Cannot convert to alpha without it being initialized. OK, I didn't realize that. So let's just go back here. And as annoying as this is, Let's go here and put this back within the function, okay, called load animations, okay, and do this. And that doesn't look nice. One second, okay, better. So I'll do self.health animations, okay, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna need to change all these to self.health animations, okay. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is that when this is initialized, okay, when this function is, uh, when the object is created, I'm going to call self dot load animations. Okay, pretty simple, right? So no big deal. And let's run this code now. And still one error. What is this? Of course, I missed one. Self. Okay. Now this better be the last time. That awesome. Okay. There you can see our health bar is over there. Okay. And if you want the player to render in front of the health bar, okay, or you want to decrease the size of the health bar, go ahead, do that. If you want the player to render in front of the health bar, then just change the order in which they're rendered. Okay. Like I go to player over here, just uh, you can change this to uh, if you put this line before the player, then the health bar will appear behind the player. So it's totally up to you. We're almost done now. We're almost done. We just need to go to the player and now uh, make a player hit function. Okay, so where should I put this? I'll just put this over here. Okay, uh, with def player hit. Okay, and it takes damage as the parameter. And what it does is goes and calls the um, take damage function on the health bar. Okay, and passes in damage. Okay, so I think that's enough for a basis. Uh, let's go ahead and see what happens when I call this from the enemy. Okay, I'm going to go to the enemy now, and just let's remove that. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to remove pass over here and actually add in some code. I'll say player dot health bar. No, wait, sorry. What I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is player dot player hit, and I'll pass in damage. Okay, so the damage is one. Okay, and we, later on, we'll go ahead and add in stuff like enemy to have their own damage and health and stuff, but later. Okay, n not yet. Not yet. So, yeah. Player, this will call the player dot hit function, and it'll give it a damage of 1, and the player hit function will then make the health bar take damage. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. There's a slight problem we'll encounter, and yeah, there you go. The player lost all of his health in just an instant. Okay, now why is this happening? Now the answer to this is pretty obvious. It's because uh, we're checking for damage each frame. Okay, so the player and, and the enemy were in contact for roughly half a second, I think. Right, so that was thirty frames, and the player, you know, the player was basically detected as being hit for you know thirty times. Okay, so he basically took thirty damage which is pretty extreme. What we need to do basically is add in player cooldown, a player hit cooldown. Like the player gets hit and then he's basically immune to damage for a second. That's basically my way of doing it. Uh, other games have their own ways, I guess, and, but this is a pretty common technique because when you, when you take damage, you basically become invulnerable to damage for a second or two, right? So that's basically what we're going to implement. And for that, we'll introduce a new concept into this series, which is events, okay? I mean, no, we're using events over here. But what I mean is user defined events. Okay, we haven't used those yet. <clears throat> right, so um, I'm going to go here and actually make a new section for player events. I don't think we'll actually end up having more than one or two, but 
Um, let's just go ahead and do that. I'll make a new event called self dot hit cooldown event. Okay, and I'm gonna declare it by saying pygame dot user event. Okay, plus one. Now uh, a little background here. Again, I'll include a link in the description below. I have a whole video on this whole a whole like 15 20 minute video. This is a pretty interesting concept. It's very powerful. So, but the very basic premise is that Pygame has roughly 32 slots for events. Now, I think 19 of these are reserved, okay, for Pygame's own custom events like mouse button down and key down and quit, okay. And I think that there are roughly 12 or something like that. There are roughly 12 or 13 slots available for us, okay. So what I'm doing here is basically uh, Pygame dot user event is actually a constant, sort of. It has a value of like 19 or something, which is basically that boundary. So, so what you do is that when you want to declare an event, you just say pygame.user event plus one. Okay. Now, if I make a second event, I would do plus two. For the third event that I make, I'll do plus three. I'll do that basically. Okay. So that's just how you declare events. Okay. Now, I'm going to make one more thing self dot hit cooldown. This is getting pretty tiring self.hit cooldown is equal to false. Okay, this is the Boolean value, which is like self.attacking, self.running, self.jumping, which is basically gonna track the state of the player and whether he's in a hit cooldown state or not. Okay, and what is, the, what is the purpose of this event? Don't worry, I'll explain that. Okay. Okay, so what's the next step? I'm just gonna save this. And then I'm gonna say down here, where's our player hit function, that if the uh, what is it called? Self dot hit cooldown, right? So if self dot hit cooldown is equal to false, like the cooldown is not active, then and only then take damage. And once you take damage, then go ahead and convert this. Uh, sorry, turn this true. Okay, the cooldown becomes true. And we need to turn off this cooldown as well, right? Because we've turned the cooldown on true, but who's going to turn it off? So for that, I'm going to use events. Again, you can do this in some other ways as well, but I'm just want, I just want to use events. Okay, so I'm going to do iGame.time and set timer. And what uh, what is it? Yeah, self dot hit cooldown event and bracket sorry comma one thousand. What this does is that it sets a timer and it calls this event. Okay, self dot hit cooldown event every 1000 milliseconds. Okay, that's what it does. And what we're going to do now is go back into the game and make a new error, uh, event handling statement. If event.type is equal to player.hit cooldown event, then what I'm going to do is player.hit cooldown is equal to true. Okay. And there's just one more thing I want to show you guys. This is going to call this event every one second. So I just want to show you something. Okay, um, where do I add this? Uh, okay, I want to actually put a print statement here that cooldown turned off. Oh, wait, wait, this is supposed to be false. What am I doing? Okay, it's supposed to be false because they're basically turning off the cooldown. Because if this is being called, one second has passed. So we're like, okay, one second has passed. Turn the cooldown off. Okay, so I'll just run this code now. And I'll let the enemy attack me. And as you can see, I only lost one health bar. But there's still one problem. The event is being called every one second. So now it's not doing anything harmful. But it's still kind of annoying, I guess. Well, not annoying. It's more like it could potentially cause problems in the future. So what I'm going to do here is that once this event is called, I'm going to do pygame.time.setTimer again, and I want to basically disable this event, you know, once it activates once. Okay, I don't want it to keep repeating. So I'll do player.hit cooldown event bracket zero. What this does is it basically disables the timer. It disables this event. So let's try this one more time and see what happens. Okay, you can see here that it was printed out after one second and no more are being printed out. So that means that it's working. Awesome. Okay, that was a lot for this video. And we're actually done here, so good. 
That's good. And is there anything else that we really need to do? Nope, I think that we're good for now. So yeah, in the next video, we'll take a look at something also really cool and something found in RPGs, and that's items, okay? We'll take a look at uh, money, money drops, and uh, health drops, okay? I don't think it'll be a very long video. It'll be pretty short, so that's good because we've been having some pretty long ones for a while. So I hope you guys subscribe and you know leave a comment, leave some feedback, okay? Because uh, subscribe so that you guys can follow up with the following videos because there'll be a lot more. Okay, and depending on your guys' interests, of course, because I may decide to end this early or I may decide to you know keep expanding this and adding in new things based on how interested you guys are and you know your feedback basically. Because there's no point in making this if no one's interested, right? So. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys in a later video.